Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God Written by Lucky Old Cat Chapter 211 Brilliant Effect Although Shurfeng's tone was soft, power filled his voice. It caused the female healers nearby to tremble, nearly failing to cast their heels on the two MTs. The two MTs tanking the four elite monsters were similarly shocked stiff, receiving a direct hit from the giant steel axes of the Beastman warriors. Damages of over 400 points appeared above both MTs, and the two retreated close to half a dozen steps before they managed to stabilize themselves. The other damage-dealing team members also froze. They all stared at Sure Fong with dumbfounded gazes, thinking that their ears had played a trick on them. Replace the MTs? What kind of joke was this? The two players tanking the elite monsters belonged to the top three MTs of the guild. Yet, Sure Fong wanted to replace them with someone else? Wasn't he just looking for trouble? Sure Feng's decision would be understandable if the two MTs had made an error while luring the monsters, or lost the monsters' aggro. However, neither of the MTs made such mistakes. So why should they be replaced? Did they do something wrong? Cruel Sword asked. MTs were the core of a team. A powerful MT could greatly reduce the rating difficulty of a dungeon. A team should never rashly replace their MTs. Nothing. Sure Feng shook his head. Indeed, the two MTs did not make any mistakes up until this point. However, not making any mistakes did not necessarily mean that everything was fine. Capable of holding aggro and taking blows, if this were a normal virtual reality game, there would be no problems if the MTs of a team could perform these two tasks. However, God's domain was different. Just carrying out these tasks was still not enough to secure a victory for the team. Since there are no problems, why should we need to replace the MTs? Cruel Sword wrinkled his eyebrows. The two MTs in question were furious right now, clearly displaying their displeasure. Sure Fong was just someone they had invited, yet he dared criticize such powerful MTs like themselves? Wasn't he being too arrogant? Their ability to evade attacks is just too poor. To put it bluntly, they are taking too much damage. When they face a boss, even four healers will not be sufficient to keep them alive. Moreover, their damage output is too low. In a boss battle, even 1% of HP could decide victory or defeat. I'm guessing that, when you guys faced the first boss of this dungeon, aside from having insufficient damage, your healer's mana ran dry as well. In the end, the result was a complete team wipe, Sure Feng said with a smile. Listening to Sure Feng's words, the two MTs immediately fell speechless. Cruel Sword was also awestruck. Clearly, he had not mentioned the matter of their team wiped to Sure Feng before. Yet, Sure Feng correctly guessed each detail of their previous encounter. Everything Sure Feng had just said was clear and logical, and Cruel Sword agreed that he needed to make some changes. I wonder if Brother Yi Feng has any suggestions on how we can improve? What kind of MT do we need? Cruel Sword earnestly sought Sure Feng's guidance. The other members of the Assassin's Alliance were no fools, either. They had discerned the meaning behind Sure Feng's words. As a result, the dissatisfaction they felt towards Sure Feng in their hearts lessened greatly, while respect slightly grew. Each of them perked up, focusing Sure Feng's wise opinion. It's very simple. Look for two Guardian Knights who have allocated their free attribute points in the ratio of two strength. One agility, two endurance. It would be best if they have learned both Guardian Aura and Power Aura, Sure Feng unhurriedly spoke. Unknowingly, Sure Feng had suddenly become the heart of the team. Within moments, Cruel Sword had found two Guardian Knights from his guild that fit Sure Feng's requirements. However, these Guardian Knights' techniques were not anything impressive, and their equipment was subpar at best. One of them was White Feather, and he only possessed slightly over 1,700 HP. The other Guardian Knight was called Water Lake, and his HP was just over 1,800 points. Furthermore, the two's defense was lower than the previous MTs by more than 200 points. They were on completely different levels. However, Sure Feng saw nothing amiss after examining the two's equipment. The remaining problem would be their techniques. Sure Feng then continued by explaining to the two Guardian Knights how they should battle the elite monsters and how they should dodge attacks. 
As for how much of his explanation they actually understood, that would depend on their own comprehensive abilities. Following which, Shurfong instructed one of the Guardian Knights to activate Guardian Aura, increasing the defense of the entire team by 20 points. He then instructed the other Guardian Knight to activate Power Aura, increasing the strength of the entire team by 5 points. Shurfong also switched his title to Might of a Thousand, greatly increasing the attributes of the entire team. As a result, the HP of the two Guardian Knights almost reached the 2000 HP threshold. The team's jaws dropped when they witnessed the brilliant effect brought about by Shurfang's Might of a Thousand title. Increasing all attributes by 10%, this was an outstanding weapon for dungeon raiding. Such an increase was the equivalent of raising every team member's equipment by an entire rank. With such a brilliant effect, they had far more confidence in dealing with the bosses of the dungeon. Hence, everyone started clearing the elite monsters with great excitement. When they first started out, everyone still felt skeptical about Shurfang's decision to replace the two MTs. It was simply illogical to replace their previously powerful MTs with weaker ones. However, shortly after the two Guardian Knights began tanking the elite monsters, they immediately discovered that there was a massive difference. Although the Beastman Warriors dealt around 450 damage to the two Guardian Knights with each hit, these Beastman Warriors only managed to land one out of every three attacks. In comparison, the previous two MTs would receive two out of every three attacks, taking an additional 150 damage every three attacks. With such a glaring difference in damage, the burden on the healers greatly lessened. Moreover, as they faced more battles, the two new MTs gradually evaded with better efficiency, taking fewer hits as a result. This had allowed the healers to expend less of their mana, thereby increasing their endurance. By the time they arrived before the first boss of the dungeon, Karor, the healers no longer felt any pressure in healing the two guardian knights. They even had time to attend to the other team members. Karor was a large and ferocious beastman. He was twice as large as a normal beastman, and his body was fully covered in steel like scarlet muscles. On his back, Karor carried a mammoth magical saber that was as long as he was tall. Meanwhile, Karor himself was a level 12 high chieftain ranked boss with a whopping 450,000 HP. Brother Yifong, I wonder if you have any ideas of how to best raid this boss? When facing with Karor once again, Cruel Sword's thoughts started growing heavy. After all, Karor had already team wiped them multiple times. MTs should hold aggro properly, while everyone else should evade Karor's skills. That should be it, I guess. Sure Fong casually spoke after giving the question some thought. Everyone in the team immediately sent contemptful glares at Sure Fong. Wasn't this just a bunch of nonsense? Wasn't that obvious? All right, MTs take action. You two should take turns tanking the boss. Whoever's HP falls to a critical state should immediately back off and let the other tank. As for everyone else, try to use your attacks to assist the two MTs, Sure Fong instructed. Shortly after, the two Guardian Knights charged at Karur. According to Shurfang's knowledge, the hard mode Karur only had two moves. One was the Blade Storm. It was a skill that turned Karur into a tornado, causing 600 damage per second to all enemies within a 12-yard distance. The skill had a duration of 20 seconds. The other skill was Avatar Slash. When Karur used this skill, he would immediately vanish from everyone's sight. He would then randomly reappear behind three to five players, attacking them and causing 500 static damage. Simultaneously, he would inflict players with a damage amplification effect, causing them to take 10% more damage for two minutes. To make things worse, this effect stacked. With these two skills at Karur's disposal, the boss prevented players from turning this raid into a prolonged battle. Otherwise, once the damage amplification effect stacked so many times, Karur's avatar slash could instant kill any player. At that time, there would be no way for the battle to continue. Hence, there was only one requirement when facing Karur. Resolve the battle in the shortest time possible. The longer the battle dragged on, the more difficult it would become. Taking the lead, the Guardian Knight, Water Lake, brandished his sword, sending a punishment at Karur's head. 
The attack only caused 126 damage. Compared to the elite monsters from before, Kuro's defense was clearly a notch higher. Moreover, such a small amount of damage was practically negligible in the face of Kuro's massive 450,000 HP. By contrast, as Water Lake failed to dodge Kuro's counterattack, the boss's saber sent him flying. A frightening damage of 1,134 points appeared above Water Lake's head, instantly devouring over half of his total HP. Following which, White Feather promptly dashed forward and activated Righteous Fury. He then used Shield of Vengeance to attract Karur's aggro. The four healers on the team did not dare make any mistakes. They immediately cast their heals on Water Lake. Plus 234, plus 215, plus 221, plus 225. A cleric then released an instant cast skill recover on Water Lake. Every three seconds for 15 seconds, the target would recover 70 HP. Simultaneously, a druid also used Life Bloom on Water Lake, recovering 43 HP every two seconds for 12 seconds. Immediately, Water Lake's HP recovered to 90%. He then returned to his position on the front lines, coordinating with White Feather to tank the boss.